So welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to discuss about introduction to financial reporting and IFRS. So the contents of this video are conceptual framework and gap, international financial reporting standards, and we are also going to discuss about the IFRS conceptual framework. So first we look at like what is the meaning of conceptual framework and like what is gap. A conceptual framework is a statement of generally accepted theoretical principles which form the frame of reference for financial reporting. These theoretical principles provide the basis for the development of new accounting standards and the evaluation of those already in existence. So we'll start from here. So normally, normally when we do accounting problems, okay, whether it's going to be a balance sheet, P and L, okay, or like SOPL or SOFP, we normally think that uh, all the numbers like asset or current asset or liability, all these numbers are like ready-madely, it's available and we just use it, okay. So in reality, it's not like that. So whenever there's going to be something like a non-current asset, okay, it's not, how do you know uh, the value of non-current asset? In a problem, usually they give you the, they, the problem gives you the value and you just use it okay but how did that value come there okay the value came there because of the journal entry ledger okay trial balance through these it has come so the first source document would have been the journal entry so in the journal entry how could have they have created that uh, that a particular machine value is like 1 lakh okay so could it be the machine's value alone okay or should we take into account the transportation cost and should we uh, uh, take into account the installation cost? Okay, should these costs also be taken into account? So, for every single item, okay, there are like multiple questions that arises whether we should take some other additional costs also or not. Okay, so assume that you buy uh, AC for your house, okay, uh, air conditioner for your house. It's not only the air conditioner that you are buying that you are going to pay. You also have to pay for the transportation, the installation, the copper wiring and all these things. So does the AC going to cost you just 40,000 or with all these kinds of additional expenses, is it going to cost you 50,000? Okay. So if each company is going to value it in a different basis, for example, if company A takes only the air conditioner cost, company B takes the air conditioner and the installation cost, company C says that. Uh, every air conditioner requires a stabilizer okay so i will i will add that cost also another company says i will take the air conditioner installation transportation and the uh, stabilizer or inverter cost okay so now what happens is each company has reported the asset in different values okay so when you have like different value assets there's a problem in comparison so what happens here is we have to create some rules and regulations, okay? So all the items that you see in your SOPL and SOFP, okay? For example, there are like 40 items or odd. All these 40 items have detailed rules and regulations as to how each uh, item has to be valued, whether it's going to be non-current asset, uh, goodwill or copyright or uh, um, plant and machinery or uh, provision, okay? Or what is equity capital? everything has a detailed rules and regulations okay so only when a particular rule and regulation is like properly followed okay that number can be entered into the accounting books okay so all uh, companies should follow the same rules for example in the uh, air conditioner example all companies have to take the air conditioner cost the transportation cost and the installation cost so that's what the rules and regulations say so you have to take those costs into account. So this is what this conceptual framework is all about. Okay. So a conceptual framework is a statement. Okay. Of generally accepted theoretical principles, which forms the frame of reference for financial reporting. So it is going to be a statement of rules and regulations. Okay. Rules and regulations of what? Of generally accepted accounting concepts. Okay. All companies have accepted it. And it is also a frame of reference. So whenever like people have doubt, they can refer to this concepts, okay, or this rules, and they can prepare their financial reporting, okay. 
so this ensures that all companies prepare their uh, they prepare their uh, uh, accounts in the same manner these theoretical principles provide the basis for the development of new accounting standards so once you have created a rules and regulations for almost all the items in your sopl and sofp thereafter any additional standard that has to be created okay can be created using the existing rules and regulations so we already know what is the rules for uh, for uh, for the value for the costing of a uh, air conditioner so we can use that as a reference and we can create or we can alter that existing standard okay so existing standards can be altered so new standards can be developed okay so and evaluation of those already in existence so even existing standards can be uh, evaluated or changed a conceptual framework will form the theoretical basis for determining which events should be accounted for how they should be measured and how they should be communicated to the user so it is a detailed rules and regulations kind of a concept here a framework is so you know it will tell you when uh, when something has to be accounted okay for example when the sales can be recorded in our books so is it like when uh, we uh, uh, a buyer pays us okay or we transport it to the customer or when the legal title goes to the customer okay the answer is the legal title going to the customer is the is the time when we can record our uh, record it as sales okay so the event is not about like transfer of the goods okay or the receiving of the cash it is actually the legal title passing from the from the seller to the buyer how they should be measured and how they should be communicated to the user okay so how this should be measured is like what i told you about the air conditioner that is about the measurement and how they should be communicated to the user okay for example uh, uh, each number where they should come in in the sopl or sofp okay so in the sofp if you see uh, it is given in a particular vertical format not in the t format okay so not in that kind of a ledger format it is given in the uh, vertical format so even the format is like specified by the conceptual framework only okay although it is theoretical in nature a conceptual framework for financial reporting has highly practical final aims okay so uh, in short how can we tell this in short we can tell it like this for example you play cricket okay uh, if you play home cricket you will create rules of your nature okay for example if you play it within your home if it touches directly a wall it's a four if it's like one pitch it's like a, uh, a two run okay or if it's like directly caught it's like out so you create some rules but these rules are like within your home at the international level they create a, a common set of rules for all the countries so icc takes that role okay so for example they create almost every single rule okay that is has to be like uniformly formed followed by all the cricketing uh, cricket, cricket academies which are associated with icc okay so they are the ultimate deciding body for example in in the last world cup uh, in the last world cup between england and new zealand okay it was like uh, such a uh, confusing rules they had okay and finally england won because of those confusing and stupid rules okay so the problem is they never thought of a, a problem that could arise in that manner okay so they never like proactively they created okay only during the match at the end of the few overs only or, or that after the ending of the last over only they decided like what should be the rule that kind of rule deciding is like stupid okay we have to create uh, what could have happened in the future okay and what rules we should have like that we have to create okay so for creating these things we should have conceptual framework so the icc rules and regulations is a kind of a conceptual framework okay in accounts also we use the same kind of conceptual frameworks so we'll move on to the advantages of having these kinds of conceptual framework okay so you can think these things in terms of icc rules and regulations also okay because like that is for cricket and uh, conceptual framework can also be applied to accounting okay so you can think in that manner so let's see the danger of not having a conceptual framework 
these standards tend to be produced in a haphazard and firefighting approach. So if you don't have a conceptual or a broad kind of rules and regulations, okay, you will create new rules and regulations like whenever you want. So that was hap that's what happened in in the World Cup uh, in the last World Cup, okay. So like uh, England versus New Zealand match, the rule was created or thought about in the last over only. So that is a very bad approach, okay. When where an agreed framework exists, the standard setting body act as an architect building accounting rules on the foundation of sound agreed basic principles. Okay, so that should be an overall framework of rules and regulations. So once we have a framework, okay, then we can create new rules very easily and quickly. We don't need to create rules like suddenly and uh, suddenly and all. Okay, so suddenly like uh, in a haphazard manner, we don't need to create. We can create each and every rule properly okay so that's about the second point the lack of conceptual framework also means that fundamental principles are tackled more than once in different standards thereby producing contradictions and inconsistencies in basic concepts okay so for example we could put like this uh, uh, <coughs> assume that uh, there is a uh, uh, there is a rule okay the rule is for air conditioners alone okay so for uh, for non for all non current assets okay uh, any additional equipment okay should not be charged with the main uh, item okay with the main uh, in non current asset okay so that is a rule but if you take air conditioners they need the copper wiring okay they need the copper wiring so is the copper wiring an additional equipment uh, equipment or is it a part of the main equipment the answer is in one place if they say that it is any any additional equipment is not part of the asset and in another place they say that uh, the copper wire can be a part of the uh, AC now it gives you two confusing kind of rules right at one place it said differently and in another paragraph it says differently means it causes confusion confusion here so what you should do is you should think about like all these kinds of similar kind of rules being like applied in various places you have to like put to them together okay and you have to think in in a, in a very clarified way like what is that additional equipment okay so you should come with a better kind of a uh, definition okay the definition for an additional uh, equipment so you can say that copper wire even though it is like separate okay it is has to be attached to the main product for the for the working of the main product so the copper wire forms the basis of the air conditioner okay you can tell, tell it like that so that's the advantages of conceptual framework so let's see the disadvantages of conceptual framework see financial statements are intended for a variety of users and it is not certain that a, a single conceptual framework can be devised which will suit all users okay so see financial statements is only for for actually for a variety of users but when a conceptual framework is created okay it will only help to find out for one user okay for example the financial reporting is like created or your uh, financial statements are created only to help one end user and that end user is the owner of the company okay so the owner is the shareholders of the company so they are not bothered about the financiers the bankers the lenders okay the employee or the supplier they're not like bother about these people the framework is created purely for from the perspective of the shareholder given the diversity of user requirements there may be a need for a variety of accounting standards each produced for a different purpose so see this is not like possible we can't like create different different types of uh, 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 financial reports okay it becomes uh, very difficult so there is only one person perspective okay the shareholders perspective alone we create a accounts it is not clear that a conceptual framework makes the task of preparing and then implementing standards any easier than without a framework okay so this is not a valid disadvantage because if you see uh, in cricket you have to have the rules okay without rules you cannot play the cricket properly in the same way you should have accounting frameworks okay you should have accounting frameworks so we will see like uh, what is the generally accepted accounting practices practices 
So gap signifies so gap signifies all the rules in individual countries this is seen primarily as a combination of the national company law the national accounting standards and local stock exchange requirements so so how do we how should we like prepare our accounts see our accounts should be prepared as as like stated by the national company law so in india you have the uh, companies act okay and there's like national accounting standards so you have the indias which is issued by uh, institute of chartered accountants of india and the local stock exchange requirements so sebi nse and bse are uh, like issuing guidelines as to how the accounts have to be prepared so in every country these are the sources of the account preparation so the, the rules are defined by these come these uh, institutions so usually these institutions what they tell would become the gap the generally accepted accounting practices so although those sources are the basis for the gap of individual countries the concept also includes the effects of non mandatory sources such as international accounting standards and statutory requirements in other countries so for example uh, if you take a company like infosys infosys is listed in india and they are also like listed in us okay so as they are listed in us they are they prepare another set of accounts for the us market okay and and some companies like voluntarily they try to adopt uh, ifrs also okay so why do they adopt ifrs uh, it helps them to helps them to uh, raise finance from international markets okay something like europe or in london they can raise their uh, a, a capital so they can issue like debentures there and they can raise so some companies what they do they voluntarily follow ifrs okay so that they could also like uh, raise funds in other countries okay so it's not only that companies have to follow the local uh, standards they can also like fo follow the international standards also in many countries like the uk gap does not have any statutory or regulatory authority okay so uh, in uh, in countries like uk they don't there's no like mandatory that the company has to follow uh, the the ifrs okay it's not like mandatory there okay but companies can follow on a voluntary basis and in usa gap are defined as those principles which have substantial authority to support okay so here in certain countries the generally accepted accounting practices have to be followed if you do not follow you will be fined so india is also in that manner only so india will also like put a fine if a company does not follow the uh, rules and regulations of the accounts but in uk there is no uh, strict provision like that okay so why it is not there we will see later therefore accounts prepared in account accordance with accounting principles for which there is not substantial authority to support are presumed to be misleading or inaccurate okay so the problem what uh, countries like us say is if you do not have regulatory power if you don't put a penalty on companies which are not following proper accounts then companies might not follow the the effect here is that new or different accounting principles are not acceptable unless they have been adopted by mainstream uh, accounting profession and usually the standard setting bodies or professional accountancy bodies okay so uh, any new principles will not be accepted okay will not be accepted by companies but it will be accepted only when it is being like uh, uh, forced by the uh, government here okay either the accounting professions have to adopt it or the standard setting body okay has to adopt it or professional accountancy bodies have to accept it okay so only then it would be like uh, pushed into the usage so gap is something like which has uh, which is generally accepted rules okay but in certain countries they are like uh, voluntary and in certain countries they are compulsory 
This is much more rigid than the UK view expressed above. A conceptual framework for financial reporting can be defined as an attempt to, to codify existing gap in order to reappraise current accounting standards and to produce new standards. So where does conceptual framework and gap come to here? See, gap is something which is like the rules and regulations which are like generally like followed by all companies and the conceptual framework is like much more broader. Okay, so they create a conceptual framework that so that rules and regulations which are created in gap in future, okay, should not like contradict each other. At the same time, it should be it should be like quite easier to apply also. So a conceptual framework is much broader and, and bigger. Gap is something which is a regular usage of accounting rules. Okay, so once we have a framework, it's better. It is easier to create in any new, new rules and enforce it through gap okay so that's about the gap here so what is the use of the conceptual framework so if we'll see look at from the ifrs angle we saw it from the general angle now we'll look at from ifrs angle to assist the broad sorry to assist the board in the development of future ifrs and in its review of existing ifrs so the i there is a separate committee uh, or uh, organization which creates the uh, rules which are called as IFRS okay so this is done at an international level so this is IFRS is not any particular country it's not like UK based or something it is like throughout the world they are followed to assess the board in promoting harmonization of regulations accounting standards and procedures relating to the presentation of financial statements by providing a basis for reducing the number of alternative accounting treatments permitted by IFRS. So what happens is see every country has their own accounting uh, rules and regulations. So you cannot compare the accounts of one country to another country. Okay. So what happens is IFRS brings all these things into one harmonization. So rather than having like separate different accounting standards, it tries to bring uh, some kind of a convergence okay the reduction there is a reduction in the difference of accounts preparation okay ifrs helps to do that and it helps the national stand, standard setting bodies in developing national standards so any standard developed by ifrs okay can also be copied or used by uh, national standard setting bo bodies okay for example in india they could uh, they could like take an IFRS standard and they can modify as per their need and they could follow it. So also to assist preparers of financial statements in applying IFRS and in dealing with topics that have yet to form the subject of an IFRS. Okay. So it helps people to create accounts. Okay. IFRS helps people to create accounts. It helps auditors also. So it helps auditors. The conceptual framework is not an IFRS. Okay. So the conceptual framework is an idea, ideal uh, rules and regulations. Okay. Which inside with, within it, it can have the IFRS and gap also. It has all these things. But uh, IFRS is a specific rule. Okay. And so does not overrule any individual IFRS. In the rare case of any conflict between an IFRS and the conceptual framework, the IFRS will prevail. So the standard is the IFRS. Conceptual framework is only for helping to prepare a IFRS. Okay, but IFRS is what we use while prepare a preparing accounts.